Anterior vertical bi-wings. As mentioned on the posterior vertical bi-wing video, vertical bi-wings are images that show both upper and lower teeth in one image. Vertical bi-wings can also be taken on the anterior regions besides posteriors. And these images are often taken on patients who present with gum disease and involve bone loss. Can also be used for interproximal caries and when patients present with multiple anterior restorations. Vertical bi-wings extend the view further down the roots. In general, all vertical bi-wings give an excellent image of the bone and surrounding structures. On the patients, we would normally take a total of three vertical bi-wings, one centered on the midline to show the incisors and one on each side to show the canine regions. However, on Dexter, usually we will expose two anterior vertical bi-wings. Both vertical bi-wings will be centered on the lateral incisors, making sure they include the canines and the lateral incisors. These images can be taken with the ring holder or the tabs. In this video, we will use the universal ring holder. When placing the bite block on the receptor, use the same concept as with the tab. Place the longer portion of the receptor in an up and down direction. Same as with posterior placement. Also, keep in mind that the receptor should be inserted into the patient's mouth between the tongue and the teeth in an up and down direction. We will begin with the right anterior by wing by placing the receptor on the center of the right lateral incisor. So we will place it on the center of number 7 on maxillary arch and 26 on the mandibular arch making sure we include the mesial and distal aspects of the maxillary and mandibular right canine as well as the central incisors. Once the receptor has been positioned, set the tube head at plus 10 degrees. For the purpose of exposing on Dexter, stand in front of the patient and make sure that the beam can go straight through the contact areas of the teeth by visualizing the central beam. Make sure that the tube head is positioned evenly over maxillary and mandibular arch and that the receptor is completely covered by the tube head in order to avoid cone cuts. Lastly, expose the receptor. As a result, the contact areas of the exposed image appear opened and can be used for evidence of caries and the image is an excellent source to view the bone and the surrounding structures. The same steps must be repeated for the left exposure. 